Okay, this morning we're working a fish that we started working with in, after 2003. In 2003, Claudette, Hurricane Claudette came to destroy this greenhouse. We're inside of Greenhouse One. Uh, it was the only one we had at the time. Prior to that time, we were raising primarily rainbow fish. Uh, we lost most of them because of the, you know, all our water lines, air lines, everything were broken. So we ordered some fish from Florida, but hurriedly built greenhouse too before winter and uh, ordered some fish from Florida. And one of the uh, fish we ordered was, uh, I don't know, two or 300 uh, OB peacock juveniles, one and a half, two inches long. We grew those up and uh, picked fish that basically all of our OB peacocks go back to now. Uh, we you know, started an orange OB line, a gold OB line, blue OB line, party color, which is multiple colors, orange uh, and uh, uh, blue and yellow, blue and gold uh, on an OB pattern. But we got some fish that were not OB out of the first offspring, out of the F1s. Uh, from the f first fish we set up, uh, the OB, let's talk a little genetics, OB allele, technically allele, people say gene, but gene refers to the segment of DNA that codes for a protein. Uh, an allele is a version or a type of that. Uh, and the, the, set, the gene that codes for OB uh, is a dominant... Uh, uh, has a dominant allele called OB, and if a fish inherits one copy of it from one parent and doesn't get one from the other parent, it's still OB. So when we mated these OBs together, we got some non-OBs because some of the males and females, Oso, Maya, come over here. Oso, leave Susie alone, come here. Oso, back over here, mangy dog. Uh, this Oso and Maya, they are I don't know what y'all are doing in here. It's hot today. What are y'all doing in the greenhouses? They usually are laying in the office in the uh, AC. Anyway, uh, some of the uh, fish that we set up for breeding were heterozygous for OB. And when two of those mated, uh, about approximately a quarter of their offspring were non-OB. And one of the interesting non-OBs was a very, hang on, Susie, y'all get your glasses. Susie's fighting sweat. Uh, it is fairly warm. Let's see, it's 104 right now, and of course, 100% humidity in the greenhouse. We had the fan off so that y'all can hear me. We'll turn the fan on as soon as we're done. Uh, anyway, the, uh, one of the interesting non-OBs is pretty blue. And let's take a look at our, uh, we just processed breeding colony. These are our four male breeder, uh, uh, breeders. I'm going to keep all four of these. We just are, we're just now getting this breeding colony up to, uh, to full. This is a spectacular fish. This guy's interesting. Oh, that kind of bar is nice. They're all four nice. So I'm going to keep them. Look at this guy. He is really, really nice. Nice big fish too. Okay, look. Put them. I've already put the females up. Uh, let's see, how many females do I have over there, Susan? Total? Yeah. 56. 56 females and these four males. So we should get this breeding colony in full production, this breeding cycle. Uh, what did I keep? How many old females did I keep? 15. 15. I purged uh, about 20. Uh, females from the breeding colony. I'm going to show you uh, why. I set aside a few females here for demo purposes. Let's drop some in this tank. This uh, strain has uh, quite a bit of variation in it. 
uh, what I've discovered in breeding the Lanakeras and peacocks, peacocks are basically uh, aquarium strain Lanakera, is that dark females like this one throw darker blue males. Light females like this one don't. So what I did, did is purged all these lighter females. Let me, uh, yeah, I'll put them back in the bucket and I'll sort them in a minute. So I've, what I've done is kept these darker females. Put those with the males. And you can see this one has some uh, blue on her gill plate. And they're going to throw the best dark blue males, which is what I want. That little one is dark. Yeah. And then these four females are being purged. They're nice, but I'm going to show you uh, what their sons will look like in a second. She's got some fair amount of color. Now, if somebody, I'm not going to name any names, but if Susie would let me build another greenhouse, then I could uh, uh, select males from these lighter females. Okay, let me wipe this tank down, and then I'll get these nails up here. This, I just want to, want to he splash water in my mouth. This is a nice male, but he, he's got too much brown in him, so he's not going to be a breeder. Uh, let's see, what was this? Oh, I know. I want to look at that fish again someday. Okay, let's look at these males. These are some young males. This is going to be a nice fish. He's not fully colored yet. This fish is likely to be a little bit paler than I like. I'm pretty sure this guy is going to be. Uh, and those paler females so that this fish will be sold as a mixed Alana carry. He's got too much yellow in him and uh, doesn't fit my definition of, of blue. This guy doesn't have a really good blue color, but we'll look at him again and see what happens. So you can see the light females throw that, the dark females uh, throw this. This guy's going to be pretty nice. Uh, let's see. Well, I'll take this out later. Is it? By the way, these are all going to get sold. I already have a bunch of males in the mail sale vet. Okay, so let's review things. Uh, this fish is homozygous for non-OB allele on the gene that codes for blue in Alonocaras. And pretty much every Alonocara species has some blue on them. Uh, uh, the dark females, in my experience, throw dark blue males. The light females are light blue, and, and this strain, I'm looking for males that look like this. Nice dark blue. Okay, so we're going to put these guys up, and uh, we've got the breeding colony up to speed. I've purged out light females and have all dark females. I gave preference on us uh, selecting dark females to get uh, the, any females had blue on the jaw or the gill plate because I think they uh, throw more colorful males too. Okay, good fish keeping.